All right, hey there, YouTube. Uh, so let me start by saying my videos are all out of order. Um, I have a final Audi video. I have another Jeep update. Um, and now I have this car in front of me. Um, there were a couple videos I hinted at this coming, um, but I'm probably actually going to release this video first just for a little bit of fresh content. Um, so this is my new to me 2008 Acura TL. Uh, for those of you who have been with the channel since the beginning, um, I started this channel six or seven years ago now. And um, you will remember that my first car was actually a second generation TL. Um, I had a 2000 model in Laguna Green Metallic. Um, that was my first car. I had that for about a year and a half, put 17,000 miles on it before it was totaled. Um, after that, I had bought a, um, a 2013 Accord V6. And I liked that car, but it was never quite um, what I was looking for. It didn't have that old Honda charm. Um, so I ended up trading the Audi on this. That's a whole, that's another story. Um, I'm not going to include that in this video because I've kind of already touched on it um, in a video that will be coming after this. Um, but yes, this is my new to me 2008 Acura TL in Nighthawk Black, Nighthawk Black Pearl. You can see this is not a Type S, this is just the standard front wheel drive TL. Uh, we can see the 17 inch wheels here. This car is in excellent shape. Um, I actually found this at a local Lexus dealership. Um, and I just kind of got, got it right at the right time. Um, these cars are very hard to find up here um, in good shape. You can see this one's got a little bit of a issue in the door, cosmetic issue in the door over here. There's a little bit of a dent um, and a little bit of a mark in the paint. I'm not really that worried about it. The car is 13 years old. Um, it's only got 106,000 miles on it. So I really can't complain. Um, and it's going to need a paint correction. Like these headlights need to be cleaned up. There's little things. Um, and like there's a mark on this bumper up here. Um, but outside of that, this car is mechanically and cosmetically in excellent condition. Um, they do like to... Rust, a lot of older Acuras and Hondas like to rust over here, and it doesn't look like there's any, so that's good. Um, and that's like a couple parking lot door dings and stuff, but that's just kind of standard. Coming out back, you can see the clear style taillights. That's a 07 and 08 thing. Uh, for those of you who don't know your TLs, this is the third generation. You can see the dual tips out back here. I kind of parked too close to the snowbank, but car does have dual tips. But yes, this is the third generation Acura TL. Uh, ran from 2004 to 2008. And um, this is the post refresh model. This is for 07 and 08. Um, got a little bit of an update in the front end. Fog lights, clear tail lights. Um, different wheels and a different interior, just a little bit. Uh, but we'll go ahead and hop inside. You can see here's the key for it. This is Acura's older switchblade key. Still works. Coming inside, this has the black leather interior. Typical Acura. Eight-way power driver's seat. Seats are in excellent shape. Um, Normally, these like these seats in this generation TL like to get torn up. Um, so this driver's seat's in pretty good shape. That passenger seat's been done over. Um, the dealership did that before I bought it. Um, let's see the wood on the door here. And this door handle, you can see the metal starting to come up a little bit. Now, um, that's another common issue. <clears throat> but, very minor. Take a look at the back seat here. Yes, that car is in excellent shape. You do you get vents back here? Let's see, I have that little booklet for it that the dealership made. And pulling down this armrest, you do have an armrest with cup holders. Man, funny. An OATL has better cup holders than my Audi did back here. <laughs> That's funny. Anyways, um... Yeah, I think that about wraps it up for the back seat. It's really not much back here. Let me grab my keys. Let's open up the trunk while we're back here, just to solve that, or 
just to come back here. You can see, I don't really use my trunks very often, so there's nothing in here yet. Um, the, the hinges are covered, so that's good. Um, and yeah, I think it has a 60-40 split fold. At least it should. But again, I don't really need that. Let's see the accurate door sill plate there, if it wants to focus. There we go. And we'll go ahead and hop inside. And good old-fashioned ignition, stick the key in, and just flick. We have that good old J32 V6. And coming inside, the door shuts nice and solid. Still, that's pre it's pretty impressive for a 13-year-old car. Um, you can see this one does have navigation. That was pretty much the only option you could get on these cars. They came pretty much equipped with everything. Um, like I said, you could step up to the Type S, um, but outside of that, the only real option is navigation, um, and this one has it. So you can see 106,568 miles. I put about 100 miles on this or so. Um, I picked it up Saturday. Today's Monday. Um, so I haven't really had the time to drive this car yet, um, but it's definitely the old Acura that I know and love. Um, and that's kind of what I was looking for. Nice, heavy, tight hydraulic power steering. Um, obviously, you can't tell how heavy it is in the video, but it's <laughs> it's pretty heavy. I will give it that. Um, I definitely forgot how heavy Honda steering used to be. Um, you can see the volume controls on the radio there. Cruise control off to the right. This does have hands-free Bluetooth. However, the module is disconnected. Because uh, the mod, the Bluetooth module in these cars, it's kind of located in the overhead console here. Um, they actually like to kind of break and drain the battery. Um, so it appears as if that was disconnected at one time. Uh, because if you go over here into the trip menu, you can see if I scroll to the hands-free link and then attempt to press it, you can see it just says booting up. And it'll continue to just sit there and say booting up. Um, it's typically an indication that it's been disconnected. Um, so I don't really care. I'm not on my phone very much in the car. Um, it would be nice to have Bluetooth streaming audio. There are aftermarket modules that enable you to get um, Bluetooth streaming audio. So that is something I will potentially look into, um, but just not right now. Let's see, tire pressures. Let's scroll back there for a sec. And 35 all around, perfect. And like I said, 106, 568, outside temp is 34. I mean, even like this steering wheel is in very good shape. It's not shiny or it's not really shiny or anything like that. Uh, my Accord wheel, which I had taken care of, uh, looked a lot worse than this um, at the same mileage. Automatic headlights over there with the fog lights, obviously. Um, and then the wipers up to the right. Over here, dual zone automatic climate control, pretty standard stuff. Um, you guys all know how dual zone climate control works. Up there, you can see the driver passenger temps and um, with the clock, and it also tells you the name of the song. Uh, so that's pretty good. I mean, you can see this navigation system's definitely straight out of 2008, um, but by 2008 standards, I think it's pretty good. Honda was using this all the way up until 2012. So, um, yeah, overall, not a bad system. You can see I have it set to red at the moment. Um, that's just kind of how I like it. Uh, go into menu here. So obviously that's the menu for the nav. Nav screens over here. Um, screen adjustments. If I come into more, the colors over here. Um, but yeah, I haven't had much time to play with it. It's a pretty basic system. It, again, it's 2008. Um, but it works well. So something cool I found as I'm kind of digging through the um, what the car came with. Turns out Acura made a 2017 update for this navigation system. Um, and the previous owners were nice enough to install it. Because uh, when I come into the booklet here, um, if I can op manage to open this with one hand, um, you will see that this is the original 2006 um, 
navigation DVD. Uh, where is it? Say version 4.63 2007 Honda Motor. Um, so that's pretty cool. It's got this 2017 um, navigation update. I want to say this is an eight speaker ELS audio system. I'm trying to think one, two, three, four, five, two in the door. That's seven. Are there in, are there in the door? They are not. So one, two, five. I'm just trying to think five and then yeah and then two on the deck and the sub and the, on the deck so it'd be eight speakers yeah so eight speaker ELS audio sounds very good again for by 2008 standards excellent audio system um it's not the Bang & Olufsen that was in the Audi but that's fine um it's more than enough for what I need moving on to the rest of the center console here you can see that we have more of this um like the dark brown wood it's not a real wood uh, but that's okay. Uh, these pieces of aluminum are real, so that's pretty nice. Um, usually, these trim pieces like to get dented and scratched up easily. These are in very, very good shape, as you can see. There we go. Look how scratch here, um, but again, nothing compared to what these usually look like. Um, you have a cubby there, a little storage cubby. Uh, you have a cubby down here as well with the power outlet, uh, as you can see. Five-speed automatic was the pretty much the only trans. Well, it was the only transmission in the base TL. Um, you could option in a six-speed manual on the Type S. Um, if you go for a pre-refresh 04 to 06 model, you can get a six-speed um, in the plain Jane, you know, normal TL because uh, they didn't really have a Type S back then. Uh, if you do get a Type S, these come with a limited slip diff, um, so that's pretty cool. You can see this does have the manual mode as well. Uh, it tells you what gear you're in over to the left over there. So that's pretty cool. And then obviously you have low as well. Combining into reverse. You can see you do have the rear backup camera there. No guidance lines or anything like that. Again, it's 2008, um, but the camera's still there. So, you know, I can't complain. Tool stage heated seats for the driver and passenger. That's pretty good. Two massive cup holders. Um, and you do have, if I'm not mistaken, a tray back here, maybe. Uh, okay, this doesn't appear to have it. I guess sometimes, I've seen some that have like a cup holder cover. This doesn't appear to have it. Um, but I guess maybe they didn't, I don't know. Do you have a dual stage console there? So that's pretty good. Um, usually the padding on this armrest, this is common with pretty much every older Honda from the, from the 2000s era. Um, the padding in the, in their armrests like to recede. Um, this one still has its padding, so that's nice. Um, another thing, these dashboards like to crack. This dashboard's not cracked. Um, not that that's, that's typically not a problem in the Northern States anyways. It's usually down south. Coming over to the glove box, definitely a good size. It is, um, lined with felt and um, it is damped as you can see there very nice um, coming up top you have the interior lights sunroof which does tilt as well so that's nice auto dimming rear view mirror you have the mirror and vanity light over here two-person memory seats, um, automatic windows for the front, so that's nice, and um, I honestly think that's about it. I think I hit, I think I hit every point. Um, garage door opener, and I think that's about it. I did want to comment on interior materials a little bit, because like, for 2008, I, I mean, I would say this is arguably the best interior Acura ever really put out. Um, at least in that era. Like, everything in this interior is soft. Like, this little fold-out cubby here, nice and padded. Um, it's even padded over here. Obviously, this portion here is padded. The top of the door is padded. Uh, the dashboard is not padded, but it's a really, really nice textured plastic. Um, over here, this is padded, the glove box lid's padded, uh, just like even, you know, even the sides of the console over here are padded. So like, it's just a really premium feeling interior. Um, and yeah, I just, I really missed my old 
Acura. So I, <laughs> I really wanted to get back into one and um, that's what I did. So we'll see if we, I can find the hood release here. Um, yeah, down there. There we go. Get up underneath the hood. Before that, I'll give you a few revs. Good old J series. Definitely missed that noise. And coming up underneath the hood. You can see the 3.2 liter J32 V6 taken away. In typical Honda Acura fashion, makes 258 horsepower at 6,500 RPM. And I think about 233 pound-feet of torque um, at 5,000 RPM. So definitely a, a high revving motor. These motors love to rev. And um, yeah, a lot of plastic under here. This is back when Acura had a fascination with plastic engine covers, uh, but I guess pretty much everyone was doing that back then. And yeah, 93 octane fuel required. I got a feeling they didn't put, the dealer didn't put 93 in this because it, it's a little noisy, but what can you do? I also wanted to go over the little booklet that the dealership gave me here um, just because I thought this was pretty cool. Um, so obviously you can see the picture of the car here um, and then coming in here, this is the Carfax. So you can see no accidents, two previous owners um, and uh, it's lived in Massachusetts its whole life. First people owned it for almost five years. They didn't put that many miles on it. Uh, and then the people after that um, also didn't put that many miles on it, as you can see. Uh, coming over here, you can see some of its initial service records. I'm not gonna touch on everything. Um, you are more than welcome to pause the video and kind of take a look. Um, it failed emissions here, that's kind of strange. The car only had 25,000 miles on it. Um, but the state of Massachusetts, the emissions test here is a little, it, it, they're very finicky. Um, so it could have been something as simple as a dead battery that could have caused it to, uh, to do that. Um, and then you can see this is where the new owners come in. Um, made pretty regular trips to the dealer. Uh, they liked to use Meineke. Um, but later in its life, it's got a couple of dealer records over here. Um, you can see over here, looks like 77,000 went to the dealer. Uh, and then at 105, it had its timing belt. So that's, that was like, that's really the number one concern you want to look for with these cars. Um, or really any older Honda, um, with the J series V6 and even, I think they, no, the K series was chain driven. Might have been the F series. I think it was the old F series four cylinders that were also timing belt driven. Um, every hundred and five thousand miles, you want to make sure those are done. And um, yeah, that's the end of the Carfax. Uh, and then I will bring you over into what the dealership itself did. And it by Lojack. Um, that's just a waste. You can see express oil change. Obviously, they changed the oil, wipers, um, air filter, alignment. That's kind of standard stuff. Um, what really caught my eye was they did the valve cover gasket. That's kind of another G series thing. These cars are very reliable. You just kind of want to have, you just kind of have to keep an eye on the valve cover gasket. Um, but luckily, that was done already um, right before I bought it. Uh, the oil pan was resealed as well. So the dealership ended up putting about $2,000 in this, give or take, um, you know. So I think it'll be good to go from here on out.
overall, very happy with the car so far. I think it'll treat me well. At least I hope it does. <laughs> um, but I think that's going to wrap it up for this video. So let me know what you guys think down below. And um, as always, thanks for watching.